Hello everyone and good day. This is the Undying Nephilim and today in this video I am going to show two of the new NPC or minor factions that are going to be showing up in the next update. Um, there's going to be a little bit of a cut in the middle of the video because I'm going to record them separately so that they don't really interfere with each other but anyway let's just get started with the first NPC which is the Picori more commonly known as the Minish. I've heard some people pronounce it Minish, but I've always pronounced it Minish. And they're basically the uh, the little tiny, extremely tiny mouse-sized people from Minish Cap. And like in that game, they are also extremely tiny in Hyrule Total War. So you can see they're they're so small they kind of just blend into the grass here with their their basic soldiers, and that's pretty much their. Uh, their special ability is they they can hide pretty much anywhere because they're so small um, and there's also tons of them so they have the the swarm ability so they can gang up on lesser numbers and basically stun lock them and actually might as well take the time to talk about that one of the the I don't know if I want to call it a bug but the best strategy in medieval 2 at least is um to get enemies in a stun lock and in order to do that you basically um because the way damage works in this game it's a little bit different than usual it's not just two units meet and then it compares stats and they hack away at each other it's actually based on positioning and the actual animations which is actually kind of hyper realistic but it makes it kind of difficult to determine stats and balance things out and one of the consequences of that is um if you can surround a unit with multiple units attacking from all sides, it'll get them stuck in um, a stun animation, which in most games it's called stun locking. So the, um, the Minish are actually really good at stun locking because there's so many of them and they can you know, surround uh, their targets and just keep poking at them with their little spears indefinitely. So even though they're incredibly weak and most of the other soldiers in the game can just like walk over them, if they manage to surround an enemy, they can just indefinitely uh, stun them and poke at them to death. So that's what their main little tiny unit here can do. But as you might have seen, they have some larger units in their arsenal, namely the uh, these Armos statues, which are just called the, the Minish Armos. They were also from Minish Cap. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the Minish built them to guard... Um, the Wind Tribe cities, because uh, you can find all of these guys at the Wind Tribe ruins in Minish Cap, and you have to fight them as an enemy. But they are um, they are a Minish unit that you can get, and like most other Armos, I, they don't have any fear and they can't run away, and they have heavy armor, so they're pretty strong and durable. They're basically at the complete opposite end of the spectrum um, of their their normal their basic unit here, so. Pretty good if you want some heavy armor. If you're playing as a faction who doesn't have good heavy armor, you can get the Minish to join you and you can get these guys in your army. And then the third Minish unit is their Hover Golem, which in Minish Cap, I believe it was called the Mazal. And in Wind Waker, it's called Godan. They basically reused it in Minish Cap. And it shows up in this game too. And it has a ranged attack, and it also has a melee attack with its two hands. It's able to whack enemies around with both of its both of its hands. Um, the main advantage of this unit is not only is it a siege unit, but it's a flying siege unit. I believe there's only one other flying siege unit in the game that the Wizardrobe have. So, so if you really need to knock down a gate and get into a city, this is a pretty good unit as long as you keep it away from archers and arrow fire because arrows actually do tons of damage to flying units plus it's also um it's technically an elephant in the game's files and elephants are extremely vulnerable to ain't to to arrows because they don't have a shield stat unlike all the other units of the game so just place these guys around and do a little tiny quick battle with these guys to see how they turn out. This is actually the first time I've 
tested these guys in a battle other than seeing if they work, so um, I have no clue if they're balanced yet. <laughs> and if they aren't, I'm going to be spending the next few days doing that. <laughs> I love how these little guys are just skipping through the grass there. They're so tiny. Let's get this guy to go in, a me in melee. <laughs> Can already tell that they're stun locking some of the Gerudo. <laughs> Look at this guy over here. <laughs> He's just flinging the Gerudo around. As funny as that is, I can't wait to show um, the next NPC faction. They have a really cool unit that's kind of like the Mazal, but I think it's even cooler. But yeah, you can barely even see those Minish, and I think the Gerudo. I just looks like they're getting stun locked by them. Although looking at the unit cards down here, the I'm losing numbers, so these guys are dying pretty fast as they should. Their armor statues haven't even gotten there yet. I believe they're using the darknet animations right now, so they actually aren't able to run. And I might actually keep it that way. I might make it so these guys can't run because they're so durable and strong. That might make them a little bit too powerful. <laughs> They're trying not to step on their own guys. Looks like the Gerudo are running away from them. Mazal's still alive over here. <laughs> order him to just charge through this whole wall of soldiers and just massacre them. <laughs> Whack a Gerudo! <laughs> Come on, statues. Oh, looks like they're actually retreating. So yeah, these little tiny mouse-sized creatures scared off an army of Amazonian women. That's kind of sad. Although, again, looking at the unit cards, they've lost like half their numbers, so... <laughs> A lot of them got wiped out in the process. Anyway, that's really all there is to show about the, the Minish, or the Picori. They're... I don't know, they're not too interesting in my book. I kind of think they're a little bit cute, but... I also think the size difference is kind of an interesting little uh, feature of theirs, but they're they're not. I wouldn't say they're near my favorites as far as uh, which of the NPC factions I like most. Unlike the next NPC faction I'm going to show, which after the video awkwardly cuts, we'll I'll, I'll demonstrate them. Alrighty, next up. If you weren't able to tell by some of the models, is the uh, the next NPC faction that is being added to the game. I like these guys a lot more than the the Picori or the Minish. They are definitely one of my favorites, and I almost didn't include them as an NPC faction in the game. Actually, um, one of the people who's helped me out with bug fixing and stuff, who goes by the name of Tedster, they actually convinced me to include these guys, so I finally did. I'm really glad I did because they are very awesome. And if you couldn't tell by now, these are the Volvagians, the giant serpent fire breathing dragons from Ocarina of Time. And they are positively one of my favorites. As I said in the Lizzlefoss video, I love reptiles. And these are basically an army of overgrown fire breathing reptiles. So I like them a lot. And. Unlike most of the other NPC factions, all of their units are pretty powerful, but they're really expensive. So, anyway, what should I show first? I guess since the camera's already here, I'll go with um, their weakest unit, which is actually still a pretty decent unit, the um, Half-Breeds, which are actually a cross between the Dynalfoss and the Volvagians. So, they are basically a very heavy, heavily armored spearmen, and they have a skirmisher attack, so they can spit out fireballs at enemies before they go into melee, so they're a pretty well-rounded unit. They got decent armor, 
and a decent ranged attack that can instantly fry uh, an enemy unit that gets hit by them. So already we're, they're off to a pretty powerful start. And even their captains are like, or not captains, their officers are pretty big and awesome. Anyway, their second unit, which is probably the most recognizable, these are the, the serpents. They are technically a ranged unit. So they, they, they spit out giant fireballs from across the field and they can burn down groups of enemies. But unlike most ranged units in the game, they actually are really good in melee too. So again, they're pretty well-rounded. They're pretty expensive to train, but pretty worth it if you can prevent them from getting ganged up on by spearmen, which is their, their main weakness. And then back here... We'll get to the really giant one last, but these smaller dragons here with wings, and yes, as I'll show, they can actually fly. Kind of move them out of the way here. These are the clutch queens, or the female Volvagians, the ones that lay all the eggs. And they are a flying heavy cavalry siege unit. So they're really expensive, but they are very beefy and very useful because they can be used in so many different situations. One, they can fly, so they're extremely fast. Two, they have a really good trample and melee attack because they use um, they use the game's elephant classification. So they can basically just walk right over units or fly right over units and plow through them. So they're really good in a melee too. And three, they have a ranged fire attack. So not only can they attack enemies from afar if they want to, but they can actually also attack gates and bust into cities or, you know, bust into cities so all your armies can get in. So they are a very, 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 very versatile unit. Um, although if the enemy has tons of archers, since they're flying and they're, they're elephants, they, they can be plucked out pretty easily by archers. So as long as you keep these guys away from lots of archers and lots of spearmen, they are, I, I would say they're one of the best units in the game that you can train semi-regularly, as long as you have the rupees to train them. So they're pretty awesome. And then over here, this isn't a regular unit of the Volvagians. This is actually their hero unit, the mother of their entire brood. So she's basically like the, um, the ancestral queen of all of the Volvagians that are currently alive in Hyrule, and she is just really fun to watch in this game, because she's huge, and she has all the advantages of these guys here, but is about three times as powerful, so... Um, I'm tempted to make it so her ranged attack is actually a longer range than these guys, but I feel like I might keep it the same, because she's already just incredibly powerful, although there's only one of her, so... If you can hit her with a catapult, you can pretty much one-shot her to death, but anyway, let me get her back here. I'm going to show her in action last, because I want to show the other guys first, starting with the serpents. Oh, and a quick note before I start the battle. Um, both the Volvagians, and I forgot to mention it in the, the Pokori section of the video, they're, they're both NPC factions, but... They don't start with any territory on the map of Hyrule, so um, like in Medieval 2, they're technically guilds. You actually have to build certain things or perform certain missions in order to convince them to join your empire. And for the Volvagians, you either have to take control of all seven regions on Death Mountain, so the uh, Death Mountain Crater, the Dodongo's Cavern, the Goron Capital, and a few of the other cities up there, um, Elden Province... Or, alternatively, you can declare war on the Gorons, and for every army of Gorons you kill, it'll up a little counter, and it'll encourage encourage these guys to set up a nest in your city. So, these are the first example of an NPC that can't join certain factions, but will join others. In this case, they can't join the Gorons, because the Gorons and the Volvagians, they, they basically are, they're, they're hated enemies, they, they hate each other. And, Anyway, let's start the battle, because I want to show these guys. Well, we'll start off showing these guys, since they have a ranged attack. So as soon as they get in range, they'll start lobbing fireballs at the enemy. That one's going first. 
And they're not even just like little fireballs, they're basically the, the siege engine fireballs, so they can wipe out a cluster of enemies at once. These guys are awesome. Anyway, I'm gonna show I'm gonna just go ahead and show this this character. I love this dragon. I'm really happy how she turned out. Better than I expected. No, I want her to fly. If you just order her to walk, like she'll actually walk on her legs and she won't fly, but if you order her to run, she'll actually jump up into the air and fly like this. And her movement speed is extremely fast when she's doing that. And she'll just plow right through units. <laughs> Well, the animation's glitched there. Need to fix that. Anyway, I'm gonna get her to fly over here. <laughs> yeah, her landing animation looks like it's glitched, so I'm gonna have to fix that. And as you can see, these guys right here are already using their ranged attacks. I'm gonna get them to fly. Come attack these Zoras. It took a really long time to get flying units to work reasonably well. This engine was not meant for flying units, as you can probably tell. They're a little bit wonky, and other mods that have tried to use flying units have similar problems. I've really wanted to port this mod to um, Warhammer Total War, but just the modding tools aren't there yet, so... Can't really do that, so this game is staying for Medieval 2 at the moment. Anyway, I forgot to show these guys using their, their fire attack. Let me see if I can pull them back and have them lob fireballs. <laughs> I love the way this model turned out. Her horns are actually based on the... Um, the, the dragon from the new Breath of the Wild game, because I, I like the look of the horns. It's unfortunate that I can't use um, sprites in the actual engine of this game, because it'd be really cool if I could add like fire sprites on her, her mane and the horns. It'd look really cool if there's like, smoke coming off. You can do that in the cinematics, because Maya's awesome, but this engine just doesn't support it, sadly, so... It's a bummer, but I think it looks fine enough. Not the best in the world, but I do what I can with an 11-year-old game engine. Gee, I can't believe it, this engine's almost 11 years old now. Seems like yesterday I just got it. Maybe I'll have her fly through Mountains of Soldiers one last time. Ah, oh, fireball almost hit her. <laughs> see how the small ones are doing. Oh yeah, I was going to show these guys using fireballs, but... I keep forgetting, I keep getting distracted by the giant flying dragon, which looks like she just got killed. She got smoked by her own, uh, her own army's fireballs. Rest in peace, my dear queen. Anyway, let's see if I can get these guys to lob fireballs before I end the video. No, oh, looks like they're stuck in a melee. Oh well. Anyway, um... The next version of the game, I would love to have it out in a week. It'll probably be a few days longer than a week, though. I'm actually gonna try and make a little... Relatively small animated trailer for this version, because actually I, I've made a trailer for every new, like, big release for this game, except for the last one. I skipped out on it because I was just, I was so swamped for time and most people would just rather, you know, get the new version out and play it. They don't really care about the trailer or whatever, but I'm going to try and do a, a cool little trailer with the Deku Scrubs and Lizzle Foss and maybe I'll have uh, this charred dead dragon here roaring in the background or something. I, I have a, an idea for a trailer I think would look really cool, but if it's going on longer than a week, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna try and release this patch in a week because I know a lot of people would really like to play as the new Deku Scrubs and Lizzle Foss and have some of the bugs fixed. Anyway, thank you guys for watching this video as always. Hopefully you liked uh, taking a look at these two new NPC factions and hopefully you'll have fun adding their units to your armies. Unless you're the poor Gorons, because they don't get these guys. 
Anyway, have a good one.